Hi, hello. Today we're going to be talking about the HoYoVerse games and some of the issues that have been cropping up in these games recently. I've made videos similar to this before. I've made multiple videos on my problem with the Genshin Impact fandom. I've made a video on the lesbophobia, or two videos maybe, on the lesbophobia in the Genshin fandom. This is less directed at the fandom and more directed at the company and the games. The first thing we're going to be talking about is the voice actor issue. Now, we've had one awful voice actor be cast before with Elliot Gindy, and then now there's another voice actor, Chris Neosi, who quote unquote Neosi's ex girlfriend who blasted him in 2019 posted on Tumblr under the name Amy, claiming Chris Neosi is abusive and people need to know the truth about him. Amy said Neosi physically manhandled her in front of her friends and planned on taking sexual advantage of her when she was heavily intoxicated. After the girlfriend came forward with the claims in a blog post, several other former partners of the voice actor as well as colleagues accused him of similar mistreatment and abuse. So this is the voice actor they have cast as Moe's, I think his name is. Number of abuse allegations ranging from anger issues to improper sexual contact. One former girlfriend called him, quote, an emotionally abusive asshole who had no respect for my bodily autonomy, end quote. A former friend and partner, Tara Welker, posted on Twitter calling Neosi, quote, sexually coercive and later said on Tumblr that he was abusive towards her. Hi, hello, editing Joker here. Um, I have to add that this guy literally confessed to what he did on a post online. Uh, here's the you know, thing. So this is not even like claims anymore. This is him literally confessing to abusing people. And here's the thing. I don't know if I mentioned this in the video, so I got to add this. Um, no one really has the right to forgive him except his victims. Like you can say you forgive him, whatever. It's the victims who need to forgive, not all these white male, white cis male voice actors who are coming forward saying like, oh, we got coffee. We saw each other in the street when we got coffee or something like that. No, like people who need to forgive him before he can move on is his victims. And he said that he was going to reach out to his victims, but there's literally a post on Twitter from one of the victims saying that that was a shock to them because they were never reached out to. And people are bringing it up in the comments below. So hopefully, hopefully something will be done about this. In the meantime though, in the meantime, um, it got worse because the Sunday's voice actor decided to chime in with this huge Reddit post. And there are a couple points that I want to bring up because it's a lot. I'm not going to do this based on what part was said first. I'm going to do this based on there's one thing that was said that will I'll be able to use over and over again while talking about the rest of it. Okay, quote unquote. If the people hurt by Chris believe he is undeserving of forgiveness or that he hasn't changed at all, then that's on them. Some of these people forgave him, some didn't. They have every right to feel however they feel, but that doesn't make it true, and it certainly doesn't give them the right to dictate whether or not Chris ever gets to work again. Now, I just want to point out, no one's saying this guy can't work at, like, Walmart, Kmart, Stop and Shop. Like, he can get a job, but people are upset because he is a public figure. If he voice acts this, or voice acts in general, he is a public figure. And people do not, people are, well, people are critical of public figures for a good purpose. They are like a figurehead. And like probably one of the biggest things about being a public figure is presenting yourself or holding yourself to a higher standard. All right, hi. So in this, I go on to say how voice actors, content creators, etc., are um, held to a higher standard. I want to clarify that, like, not abusing people isn't like a high standard. It's like the common decency of people. And I don't really like how I phrased it in the original video, so I just thought I'd come on here and add this bit of context. One of the things people have the hardest time doing as a public figure is um, holding themselves to a higher standard or to a specific standard. Like no one's saying he can't work at like a store or work as anything else. People just don't want him to be a public figure. And like, if you do something shitty, you should not be in the public eye. I'm sorry, but look at like, I can't think of many YouTubers who are problematic that haven't done crimes. And the way this overall, this note about him is discussed, it's so like, 
first off, it's not Griffin's place to be saying any of this to start with. It's also written in such a like condescending way, in my opinion, because there's quotes like, then that's on them. They have every right to feel however they feel, but that doesn't make it true. I'm not blaming the victims for anything. All I said is that's on them. <laughs> whether or not to forgive Chris or believe he's changed for the better. However, I don't believe they get to decide whether he works again or not. This whole argument that he's making hinges on the fact that people shouldn't be able to tell him he can't work easily enough. Just get a job at CVS. Come, like, and why this is being worded like the only job that he could ever do is a voice actor. I can't. I completely agree that this should have nothing to do with me or you. This should be between Chris and his exes slash former friends. Then why is Griffin talking? Like that's literally a quote from this post by Griffin and it's so hypocritical. I think it's... Or it's ironic, hypocritical, whatever, because he's saying this should have nothing to do with me or you, but I'm going to speak on it like it has something to do with me. Now I'll see you guys next time with a probably better video. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, bye!